Well, I call this one silent but deadly. Um, I recently sold a guy a uh, small amp. Worked great. Guy got it, said the amp was intermittent, you know, sometime it would work, sometime it wouldn't. It threw his SWRs, his word, SWRs all over the place. You know, they were high, you know, sometimes it worked, sometimes it would jump up and go crazy. He would lose his watts, you know. Clearly the um, amplifier was bad, right? And I told him, oh, it sounds like a bad jumper or a bad connection somewhere. And he's like, no, no, no. He checked it. He did a continuity check on the uh, jumpers and everything was good. You know, everything was perfect and uh, couldn't be that. It had to be the amp, right? So uh, eventually the amp went out. So I told him, okay, send the amp, your jumpers, and your watt meter, you know, back to me and I'm going to take a look at it. And, um, you know, he sent the jumpers back and a, a watt meter. And now it's like, oh, okay, well, here's one of the jumpers he uh, sent back and he was right I'm gonna sit the camera down here hopefully you can see it and I'm gonna do a continuity check on a uh, jumper and basically you do three tests on a um, jumper table as far as using a meter you put your meter on continuity and I got it on sound so when you touch the leads together you hear that you know when you get a um, 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 continuity through it and you should have continuity from the shielded side of one to the shield of the other from ground to ground basically and from your inner coaxial line you should have continuity from pin to pin here come on I know you worked there you go. You got continuity from uh, pin to pin. And then if you go from the pin to the ground here, you should not have continuity. There should be no anything which there isn't from here to here. So that jumper has got to be good, right? I got the three continuity tests. But the problem is, and this is why I call it the silent but deadly killer, is... I'll pick up the camera and see if I can get in on this. Let's look at this one first. If you look at that solder connection, there's no solder bulging out. You know, it's all smooth and uh, no solder bulging. That's the way a solder connection should look. So turn it a little more. That's a good solder connection. Come on. All right. Doesn't look bad from that side, right? Hopefully you can see that bulge. See that bulge there? That extra solder sticking out? That's your problem with this one. That extra solder, that bulge, somebody, you know, over jealous. I don't know if, you know, uh, this was homemade or professional done, but some over jealous person put, you know, all that extra solder on there. They're like, yeah, that'd be a good joint. You know, throw all that solder on there. But what happens is when you stick it in like that into the... Um, into the socket here it widens the socket out and if you can see this you see how wide that is it widened that out so it no longer gets a good solid connection if one at all through that so I'm going to turn this a little bit this is the uh, good uh, solder or the good connector and I'm gonna stick it in there see how loose that is barely touching see all that play in there that's a bad connection same over here this one's a little bit tighter but see how loose that is that'd never be right well 
it can maybe can be fixed by tightening up that um, socket that SL239 internally or replace it but you'll never get that to work right see how loose that is that was the problem kill the amp you know messed up the SWR intermittent until it killed the amp all because somebody soldered like that threw all that solder on there you know didn't know what they're doing all that extra solder widen that out see how that fits in there that fits in there really tight and I could force it in but all that's doing is widening that socket even more you know making that socket socket not work right I don't see if I can put the camera down again and Do, do, do. When that um, joint is working right, I'm using a simulation with my fingers. That um, connection goes in there and it squeezes like that all the way down. You know, got my hand right, it squeezes like that not trying to do no porn here but that's trying to give a visual now when it's widened out because of that thing it's like this and that connection goes in there and it barely gets a grip because it's widened out there so you want it to stay you know uh, solid and straight so you get a good solid connection but you put all that solder on there and it widens it out so you don't get a good fit that's a horrible visual I probably should have drew it on paper but anyway I haven't had my breakfast yet so that's gonna be it for this one just um, one of the small gotchas and why I hate dealing with um, you know mud ducks cuz uh, you know it's where up and down there you know coax is good everything is good on their end and um, you know blow up stuff because you know, you're running power through those bad connections and them um, opened up sockets. You got horrible connections, intermittents, and all that. And it's all because, you know, it started with the bad coax. And it eventually wind, widened up those um, socket connectors. And you never have a good connection. And how are you going to run power through that? You'll never be right. And, of course, you're going to blame, you know, the amp and everything else. Okay. Uh, that's going to be it for this one. Bye.